Skinheads are on the march in the former East Germany. Germany for the Germans is their slogan. Foreigners are not welcome. In February 1999, right-wing thugs chased an Algerian through the town of Guben. Fearing for his life, the man jumped through a glass window and bled to death. It's awful that two 17-year-olds don't know any better. Eleven young men stand accused. Their age will probably soften the punishment. August 1999, Egerson. At a local festival, five extremists beat up two Vietnamese. One of the victims was in a coma for 11 days. If we hadn't intervened when we did, they wouldn't have survived. The NPD are the most violent of all far-right parties. Debate currently rages about banning them. They have the legal right to demonstrate their views with police protection. April 2000, Airfoot. On Adolf Hitler's birthday, a synagogue is firebombed. Three East German neo-Nazis are responsible, leaving their trademark behind. Heil Hitler. Even at Berlin's Brandenburg Gate, the NPD are allowed to air their racist views at a rally. June 2000, Dessau. A remembrance march for Alberto Adriano. The Mozambican father of three was brutally beaten to death. The culprits say their motive was hatred of foreigners. Jobs for Germans first. Pirna, Saxony in June. During a raid on the headquarters of a local skinhead group, police find these explosives and weapons. There is racist music and Nazi memorabilia. Some of the town's most respected citizens are behind the masked operation. Their aim is to have nationally pure zones where foreigners have to fear for their lives. The small town of Rathenau in Brandenburg is also hitting the headlines. There have been racist attacks there too, but this time the victims have spoken up. The refugee home is situated on the edge of town, next to the ruins of an old East German concrete works. About 170 people live here. The men talk about what has happened to them in Rathenau. Christopher Nso from Cameroon was verbally abused at a disco. For example, one told us, uh, they said, I hate you, foreigner. What are you doing here, foreigner? Pakistani Khalid Mahmood was hospitalized after being beaten up on New Year's Eve. They started beating me up, a group of about 10 people. Since then, we're afraid. We only go out in groups. The men don't feel safe beyond the boundaries of the home and they want to get out of Brandenburg. They express this demand in an open letter to the authorities, which has received a lot of publicity and finally given a wake-up call to local politicians. They have other implications to consider. Unemployment is high in Rathenau, and news of racist attacks is driving investors away. The mayor is concerned about the town's reputation and economy. According to police reports and investigations, what has been happening here are random, isolated incidents. We know that right-wing tendencies have brought the town into disrepute, and we do realize that we have to do something about it. We hope that those responsible for giving Rathenau a bad name will not repeat their actions. And if some of our citizens show support for the foreigners, this will have a positive influence and help to get the situation back to normal. Yet normal life looks rather different for Christopher and his friends. They encounter prejudice and verbal abuse every time they walk through the town. As far as the police know, these girls don't belong to the extremist scene, but they still say that foreigners should go. They've got no right to be here, have they? I went to the job centre recently. There was a Turkish girl in front of me, and she got the job, but I didn't. We shouldn't have to put up with it, should we? Not as Germans. The local greengrocer hears the abuse and knows why refugees are afraid. I don't see how people get so frustrated. Anyone looking for a job will find one. It's as simple as that, I reckon. Political criminologist Hans Jesker says that xenophobia is a basis of everyday life in former East Germany. 
In the new federal states, there is a culture which is dominated by the right-wing scene. So it's true that foreigners really are in more danger here than they are in the West. Journalist and author Burkhard Schroeder has been watching the extremist right for over 12 years. He has interviewed hundreds of victims and culprits. Young people in the East don't identify with the former East Germany because they never really experienced it, nor do they identify with the Western system. The word system alone is like a red rag to a bull. They're looking for a third way, a national socialist one, and we've had that one before. The internet is his most important research tool. It is where the right-wing scene networks and organises. In Germany, there is no successful extreme right-wing party. You never know who is involved, which is what makes them so dangerous. There are thugs who have just casual contact with the scene, but are not necessarily party members. The police failed to stop the growth of the right-wing violence in the early 90s, but special units are now being formed, so the pressure on the right-wing scene is rising. The police are now trying this strategy out in Rathenau. 30 officers patrolled the streets at the weekend instead of just five. On the left here is the Kiste pub, a notorious skinhead meeting point. We keep an eye on what's happening here. Looking at this, we know that the police controls prevent immediate violence, but don't stop the everyday racism. We meet Raphael neo-Nazis and skinheads in their usual hangouts. They don't want to be filmed. There is no trouble in Raphael tonight. The skinheads are on the rampage elsewhere, fighting in Magdeburg, yelling Sieg Heil through the streets. For some, it's just another normal weekend in eastern Germany.